Hello, my name's Laura Marling and welcome to Reversal of the Muse. Today I'm speaking to Catherine Marks and I have to say, of all the wicked awesome people that I spoke to, this was the most fascinating conversation that I had because it's really hard to find a female producer really really hard there was um trina shoemaker which i know but and i tried to get in touch with but wasn't having any of it and linda perry who's a fantastically successful songwriter um, and producer and there, there are female producers and dolly parton produced her own records later on and jenny mitchell did a couple and there are people who've done that but to find a sort of singular female producer especially of like rock and indie bands was really really difficult to hunt down and she's into gear and she's She's got her studio and and she was brilliant and she was very um, candid with me and I really enjoyed. I actually ended up recording two hours, which um, we've cut down, but I really enjoyed my conversation with her. And one of the most interesting things that she brought up is that she has no one to relate to. There is no other woman that she knows in the position that she is in. And she talked really interestingly about the benefits of being a female producer and that you stand out and blah, blah, blah. and, And the drawbacks and you know, the emotions and all stuff I was very familiar with in studios. I really, I'm, I find myself really having to rein in emotions. I like my, what my sort of feminine emotions. I don't like having to put them in a cage. I'm not particularly outrageous, but she really touched on a few things that I I, I really empathised with. I set the mics off at a very odd time, so I'm going to, I'm going to drop you in here. Um, I began by asking her about working with Flood and um, Flood is a producer and I knew him as PJ Harvey's producer and actually very early on in my little career I worked with Flood he was actually the first producer that I worked with on a on an EP and he was very sweet but he was obviously a little bit didn't know what to do with a I think I was 16 um, at the time and he just didn't know what to do with a 16 year old I was unbelievably shy and quiet and I remember there being a lot of awkward silences but we made some good music and he was a very nice guy. Anyway, so here's uh, here's me and um, Catherine talking about Flood and how she got into the game. Please come and see us again at Reversal of the Muse. He's very smart, like very bright. Right. So he's often trying to figure you out or trying to work out what angle. But also he's a dad as well and he you know, he can be quite nurturing. Mm. And I don't think it would have been a shock to him that he would be put with you because he is actually good in those situations. Mm. But I suppose it must have been very daunting What other you. industry does a 16-year-old girl get put in a room? Obviously, like, yeah, the flood, the flood was lovely. But that, and I think that's a really interesting, interesting point in this conversation that we're having about yeah. where women belong in that studio setting. Yeah, mm. I w- was talking to... Um, an artist from LA, a lead singer, male, and he considers himself a massive feminist. And we were talking about the Kesha situation. Yes. And I very flippantly said, I can't remember what I said, it wasn't great. And he said that's an incredibly sexist comment against women. And and then that made me think about the other other women that I've you know, like female managers or whatever, and the sexism I've experienced towards other women from them, never from men. And then it's sort of just all this sort of thing got me thinking about, from a female artist's point of view, being put with these male producers. It is a very intense situation. Mm. A lot of lines can be blurred. Exactly. Lots of blurred lines. Be- also, it is a very emotional, or can be a very emotional experience. It's close quarters... I mean, I find that with the the young bands that I work with as well, I get very emotionally invested. Mm. Okay, so if we can draw a positive thing that's come out of this discussion about Kesha and Dr. Luke, yeah. is that there is something that needs to be addressed in studios. Yeah. And that is that they are masculine made. They're yeah. like, they're, they're designed for men. You know, they were designed by men. And that's why females walking into that environment, they have to fit into these archetypes, kind of. Yeah. Because you're walking into a dude... Do town, yeah, and um, and also inevitably in creativity for me, I think always, even it, like particularly in like sound and structure, it there's sexuality and creativity are really interlinked yeah. in my mind, yeah, and um, so there are very th- these very difficult and amb- ambiguous situations arise more than we realise, yeah, and 
maybe that's been part of music and the evolution of of music as we know it but yeah. f- for instance women have higher fidelity top end yeah. in both ears okay than men yeah so does that mean that we've been mixing records since records began to the taste of men <laughs> taste of male ears do women hear fundamentally differently I think we are just fundamentally different and you're being in a recording studio is a very unique situation. I can't really liken it to anything else because you're contained and you're working these long hours. You're there. It's like a relationship mm. that you have not only with the music that you're making, but with the people that you're making it with. Mm, yeah. And it's, it has like a finite period of time and you know that you're going to break up at the end. You know, that is like a given and then it's over and you might like sort of, you know, check in once in a while. So it can be very hard for the artist and can be very hard for the producer or whoever's like really emotionally invested in it Mm. so there's not only that sort of emotion that you're going through you you can either become really close with that that person that you're making the record with or you hate them you know (laughs) there's like these sort of weird extremes that are going on and that and the emotions are really confusing but again like a relationship it is really difficult because of the the, like the male female thing Mm all women making a record would be very complicated as well. I mean, I've been working with a band called The Big Moon, who are all women. Mind you, they're awesome. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not an issue. But I was really nervous about it because I have been so used to working with, you know, guys the whole time. I know how to manage them. Mm. I mean, it's very simple. It's like a couple of, you know, buttons. Whereas with women, it's so much more complex. Interesting. (laughs) Expand, expand. Well, especially when I started producing, initially when things were going well, I'd be in really good form. And as, and if things were going really well in the rest of my life, I would perform really well. Mm. It's when, like, I'm hormonal or I've broken up with someone, you know, I find it very hard to kind of just switch off mm. and then, you know, it still affects the way that I am. And also I kind of, I'm very transparent as well. I find it very hard to pretend that stuff's all okay so if I'm upset or down or feeling vulnerable or insecure mm. or fragile, I, you know, you're aware of it, which is hard when you're working with a really young band who can see that weakness, who are already very mistrusting. They need someone to lean on. And if they're saying your fragility, they're just going to like, you know, push you and push you until there's sort of nothing left of you because they're trying to prove that, we'll see, we don't need to work with someone else or this is not the right situation or, you know, they're, they're going to let us down or I don't know, all that, these sort of things. Mm. As I've, like, become more experienced, I've m- learnt how to kind of channel all those feelings into something that is creatively better mm. and also be- have, like, build up this impenetrable force field. Like a persona? Not a persona, just now being aware that if a band is going through something and they're directing their anger or fears towards me, I don't take it personally anymore. So I'm just like, you can just say whatever you want and no matter how like much I'm hurting on the inside because of other stuff that's going on, I don't now connect them. If I could only apply that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I wonder if a man would have to do that. But I'm not saying that this is like better or worse I'm just Mm. saying that it's not a nine-to-five job I can't like go in sit at my desk like you know be really sort of insular deal with my problems and then go home and cry Mm. I'm in there for like 12 14 16 hour days having to be communicative with these people Mm. and and facilitate their creative dream Mm. you know it's got nothing to do with me it's very hard do you think that I mean, I've heard the records that you've done. There's, there's certainly creative validity to your input to them. Of course, but I'm only reacting to them. I'm right. like, in th- it's, they're providing the inspiration. That's so, that. I think that's really interesting because right. I think that's a feminine way of of, ex- of uh, saying. I thought it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah. I, I won't even like go into what the equivalent masculine thing yeah. I think would be, but I think that's a very feminine approach to okay. say I'm facilitating them and and I've similarly experienced that I used to tour with a with a couple of girls in my band but just this year we didn't have any money so I had to cut the band down and I toured with just dudes and they're they're old they're like brothers of mine 
old, old, old friends. But um, I realised I didn't have, I didn't just have that daily expunging of kind of frivolous emotion, I guess, like to, to my friend who I used to tour with, yeah. my female friend. And I began to get in right real moods. And I'm not a moody person generally. And then I realised that I had to, I sort of began to make light, light of it and just say, like, just say if I was in a really bad mood, yeah. just like make a joke out of it and just say, sorry, I'm in, an ex- I'm in an extraordinary stinking mood right now. Please don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> and try and fig- yeah, figure out a way of channeling because, I'm, because I am emotional. I'm yeah. an emotional person. Yeah. And that's why I've tried not to hide it as well. Or that's why I don't want to hide it because I want, I want to, if, I, if a song makes me cry or an artist is like telling me about what the song is about and I sort of I kind of well up or or I am in a bad mood and like I mean like a couple of weeks ago I was working with this band and they're a guitar band mm. <laughs> and um, I think yeah I was I was sort of really grumpy and the guitarist goes oh can we just do one more guitar part and I went no more guitars <laughs> no more guitars <laughs> We're making this electronic record. I'm sick of guitars. And I just like stormed out. I mean, it's, you know, it's sort of in a humorous way, but it was like, I just had to like scream. I was sort of like (laughs) sick of overdubbing guitar parts, like hundreds and hundreds of guitar parts. I think I've, um, I think I've like screamed out, I want donuts or something (laughs) like just, just like a release of anger. Mm. So I'm not, yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm, and I'm also incredibly dorky, and I'm not cool. So I don't try and hide or pretend or do any of those things. And I think that helps because it means that I can spend less energy, like trying to be the things that maybe you're expected to be when you're a guy producer. Yeah. Um, and focus on getting making awesome records, or yeah. at least yeah, you know, trying to make awesome records. Yeah. You know, I've had these great mentors who have just said who've either believed in me and then really encouraged me and given me these great, this, just kept sort of honing that point of just be yourself, just do what you want to do, get on with what you want to do. Don't listen to people who say you're never going to be able to do it. Or, mm. And I think I was very fortunate to have those people. But then I also know that with all the opportunities I've been given, I've worked really hard to make them those opportunities work and then to provide other opportunities. And a lot of the people who were encouraging me were men. Mm. The people who weren't encouraging me were the women. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah. that is something that I feel that that's bad. You're not the first person to say that in this yeah. context with the, these podcasts. But um, I think that what is good is that about three years ago, I had this... My, my best friend had a baby. And she's my... You know, oh, five years ago, sorry. She had a baby. We were both 21. And we were like... And I was like, I suddenly felt like a grown-up because she had a baby. Yeah. And um, she and the girl... She's a girl. She's beautiful. And um, Phoebe, my friend, was studying sort of fem- like feminist history at the time. Had to drop out. And then she subsequently finished. And then um, she began discussing this, this thing, which sounds really trivial in its wording but she was like we need to we need to start an age of goddess worship basically yeah just like we've been told and this is you know a very um university's feminist thing to say but um we've been pitched against each other women have been have been competitized which is a word that i've just made up but there has been this animosity between women and i think we're in the beginnings of a new age basically where i think we are so yeah where women just don't think like that anymore beginning yeah. not to think like that and beginning to sort of like appreciate other women just as they are i like the goddess worship thing mm. definitely like the conclusion that ellie and i came to was we need more female role models women who are just exactly. sort of and that's probably why i mean i know this isn't a discussion about why they're not more women in the music industry or in whatever but that's kind of the conclusion that we came to in the end i think yeah just perhaps it is a it's social conditioning or whatever, or you know perhaps people wake up and look at Ellie or something or yourself and go, Fuck, they're really you know cool chicks doing something. I could do this too. Yeah. Or they could maybe see me and say maybe working in a studio isn't an impossible thing. Mm. But then there's always going to be people who try these things and it's not going to work out for them. But it shouldn't be about whether you're a, a man or a woman. Exactly. And it's yeah, not unlike. I learned classical guitar when I was a kid from a, from a woman. 
And then recently over the years, I, I t I've taken lessons with people whenever I've seen a really good guitarist, I've asked for an hour or something with them. And I realized that I love, I'm much better, freer to play with a woman just because I feel, I don't know what I feel, it's, yeah. it's, it's irrelevant. I, I had an hour lesson with a woman and I was like, this is great. I feel like I can make mistakes and maybe it was just her temperament. But I think it's not about them. It's about me and my internal feelings about yeah. things. And I think I've learned. And then I was like, well, it's not just about me learning from women. It's about me learning from women and men. Yeah. It's just not as f frequent that I get to see a really amazing female guitarist. Yeah. Again, Ellie was saying when she plays guitar and she's a great guitarist, she feels like she's got to be the best yes yeah guitar shops are, i i did i interviewed heim and um for she this. says that she says that's in here not not because of what anyone else has like said to her there's yeah i mean that there's there's how many times can i walk into a guitar shop and be offered like a pink guitar oh, before really? yeah you know obviously not i'd not like now. a pink guitar though <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with pink guitars i mean that's changed now because just for whatever but in america it's a dude fest. Yeah. And I just recently went to Nashville and I interviewed this woman who runs an all-female run vintage guitar shop. Yeah. And it's extraordinary. And I've bought two guitars there because I, I go in and I stay all day until I've picked the guitar I want. And um, it's such a pleasure. And I totally understand that. I would feel probably feel the same way. But at the same I mean, I've walked into Guitar Centre because I've needed some equipment while I'm, you know, out there. And... Yeah, they've sort of treated me like I have no idea what I'm talking about. But then I kind of like that because I don't care, you mm -hmm. know. Little do they know I'm making like an amazing record and they're, yeah. they're working <laughs> at the guitar centre. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like That's too. So it's not, I definitely don't need it's, to be pandered to or whatever. It's an ego thing. I think I'd like to be. Yeah. <laughs> Just every I mean, now and again. Yeah. Like one time I... Do you not know who I am? <laughs> You're going to kick yourself later. I know. Um, well, they probably would. <laughs> Follow up with an email. Oh, Miss Marling, would you please, please welcome back anytime. We will pick out a selection of guitars for you. <laughs> I do get like a sick, ple not a sick pleasure, a very obvious pleasure from, you know, I'll sit down and I'll pick up an expensive guitar and I'll play a really amazing thing. And, and like, I do like that look on people's faces. Yeah. I do like surprising people. That was really arrogant what I just said, but. No, but it is. It's, I mean, the, the I have relied on the assumption that people think that I'm crap mm. in order to then be able to surprise them. Mm. But then I also work better when the expectations are really high because it makes it, uh, that's Too high. Yeah. yeah makes me uh, feel good about that kind of positive expectation rather than the expectation that you're going to fail. Which I think for the first sort of half of my career, I ha had that from the guy you know guys on the periphery like you know my peers or whatever and perhaps other other women but then the second half I started working with people who were like you are great mm. but this is a lot there's a lot of stuff you don't know but we want you to you know we're just going to throw you in the deep end and you are going to be able to do this and mm. that makes me go I am going to be able to do this but I'm also going to exceed those expectations but that's the, those are the conditions that I work better in. Some people work better in like being told that, you know, come on, you can be better, you know, or being berated constantly. Mm. I just don't. I've yeah, never yeah. been like that. I no. don't know about you. Yeah, no, I like to surprise people, come yeah. up from the back. Do you have an idea of what you'd like from the... I guess it's just kind of exponential growth, but would you like to be doing this in, in 20 years? Yes. Uh, I mean, that's something that I've had to consider as well. I will retract it for everyone else, but I think I feel it for myself. It hasn't been particularly conducive in maintaining relationships mm. or even th even thinking about if I have been able to maintain a relationship to then think about children yeah. and settling down. It's, I mean, this has become like a religion for me. You know, I mm. kind of live and breathe it. I guess sometimes that makes me sad. Yeah. Everyone I have spoken to basically has mentioned this. Yeah. And I think it crosses all all industry, actually. Of course. I think so. I, and I think it actually that any woman who is working, I think that is a challenge that they've had to face mm. in any in any career. Um, I was, re I mean, this, I was recently dating a guy and it ended and we were sitting on the bus together and he said, maybe it's okay in London, but... 
you know, you work really long hours and, you know, that must be hard. And I, I burst into tears. I was like, fuck you. Mm. You know, this is my ch- this is my choice and, like, it should be if I'm going to, you know, meet someone. Mm. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this. <laughs> if I'm going to meet someone, I would want them to, like, be proud of the things that I've achieved and mm. want to embrace the, the fact that I do work really hard. Yeah. It's not always like that. You know, when I'm recording an album, it is very intense and I throw myself into that. Yeah. It shouldn't be something that they feel insecure about. I just had someone recently who I was seeing who um, said, you're very ambitious, aren't you? Quite formidable. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I like that. I was like, that is not a compliment. Like, no. you, That's like a weird... It's just the wrong dudes. Just the yeah, wrong dude. maybe. Yeah, I, I can't see myself compromising no. on like wanting to be really good. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> and you shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to. I mean, I would never anyway. Mm. You need someone who's understanding. And then that's why it's different from the guys and girls, as, as, I suppose, in this industry as well, because a lot of the producers I know have incredibly supportive wives or girlfriends. Uh, yeah. And I, this is what, okay, so this is perfect. It's perfect. We've come full circle. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Studios are set up for men. I think we can change the culture of like the working hours and stuff. Yeah, we could change the culture of the working hours. We could change our understanding of what this environment is. You know, like I, I always get the sense that it's you know studios an environment where it's very uncomfortable to be unless you're the artist and the producer, mm-hmm. and that that makes that I, I've found that for my partners, I hate using that word, whatever boyfriends girlfriends, that they feel isolated from that. Yeah, and uh, from this world, and I. I've dated musicians and not musicians, and it's the same. Yeah. And I think... Another I musician know. would understand, though. Yeah. It's hard dating musicians, too, because it's competitive in a weird yeah. way. I, I would never. No. In the last couple of years, through playing for so long, have befriended female singer-songwriters. Yeah. And... Um, and that was really nice, because I, I didn't have a lot of female musician friends. And it's been such a relief to be able to relate to somebody about, you know, what their lifestyle is like and it, from a feminine perspective. I mean, do you know many, are you friendly with many women who do something remotely similar to you? That's hard. That's mm. really hard. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm a bit of an island. Yeah, well, you, you are pioneering. I mean, like, you are. I mean, it's, it's, it's your cross to bear. Yeah. Um, but that's it, you know, I hope there will be more. And when, yeah. when the next woman comes up, she'll have you to look to and yeah. ask questions from and, you know, relate to. And that's fantastic. Yeah. I know, I think that's sort of occurred to me as well, which is why I feel like this issue is very sensitive because inadvertently I have become a role model. Mm. Because, I don't know, since Sylvia Massey, I don't know anyone, any other female producers. I mean, there's obviously producers in the States who kind of work on hip-hop or, you know, the singer-songwriter producer kind of crossover. Yeah. But working with bands and stuff, it's a... I don't know. I mean, there's lots of different disciplines. Yeah. I mean, I feel very proud and, I t- and now I'm sort of taking that responsibility seriously, which is why I think, you know, I think what you're doing is fantastic. But it, I'm not saying that I have the, r- the right answers or yeah. I can give, you know, a clear concise cohesive thought about it either Mm. because I'm still trying to figure it out Mm. I'm still trying to figure out what this all means and is this the last industry where you know the you know the women have been left out for so long I mean Mm. I can't think of another situation that is similar to this Mm. Um, and imagine how glorious it will be when we realize that we've missed out an entire half of of creativity in this area yeah I know I think that's where goddess worship, the cringe term, yeah. is really important because I think for women who are trying to do all these, th- oh, successfully doing these things, it's, you know, no amount of, oh my God, you're the woman doing it, is going to satisfy. It has to be that they enjoy doing what they're doing yeah. and, and c- carry on pioneering it. And I think a supportive network of women is a really important part of that. Yeah. And um, so let's, let's, let's make that. Yeah, putting the female managers aside, I Mm. think it's about the creatives, about the the artists and the producers and the engineers, the people who are in the studio. I think you're spot on. Mm. 
because it's a completely different discipline and it and it is a very emotional thing, mm. I think. I'm not saying, like, cry emotion, but, like, you know, it can be sort of, a, you know, you feel elated kind of emotion. Yeah. And that stuff is the stuff that feeds your soul. So, yeah, we kind of all need to band together a little bit more. But I'm also of the mindset that I don't think men and women should be treated the same. Yeah. They're different. We are fundamentally different. And we are going to behave in in different ways yeah. in this context as well. And even like... But you want, you want that. Jesus Christ, yeah. I want that. Like, yeah. shit, if I was trying to be like Flood or Alan Mulder, I mean... I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that. I like that I'm me. Yeah. And they like that. You know, I'm me. Do yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Totally. Well, it's yeah. It's all. It's like oh, we could go very far with this, but it's it's <laughs> almost reductive. It's it's very reductive to put it into masculine and feminine. Yeah. Even. We live in the modern age. It's not even about that anymore. No. It's individuals. Yeah. Exactly. I think this is a personality based mm. career choice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not about being a man or a woman. It is about your personality and whether it's suited to this situation yeah. or not, or whatever you know, or it's your dream and you want to challenge yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I've taken up too much of your time. But I've so enjoyed it. Thank you so much for taking the time. My pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, and I really, like, I'm so glad that you exist, really. I am, and I'm really excited to see what happens in the next couple of years. I'm very flattered. I'm a great admirer of yours as well. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) All right, brilliant. Okay, awesome.